Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Sorry about that. There isn't a purge out there, of course, but things like that are the only way I can deal with the craziness out there at the moment. So welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily podcast, and I'll let you into a little secret. It feels like an absolute age since I spoke to you all. Although you've been getting daily tech podcasts, I've not actually recorded anything in over 10 days because I was seven days ahead with my podcast episodes. And in the last week, I found myself in Chicago for the no longer virtual event, just as things were starting to get pretty serious. St. Patrick's Day celebrations were cancelled. There was no dyeing water green or anything like that. And I found myself going for a walk on the North Pier in Chicago and pretty much had it to myself. And there's a great image over on my Instagram account, which you can find at Neil C. Hughes, where it was just deserted apart from a guy in a mask. It felt incredibly eerie, just like that movie 28 Days Later. So I flew home last week on a giant plane that had about 50 people on it. So it was economy with a business class kind of feel. (laughs) And I was gutted. I didn't get to meet more of you in Chicago because I did have big plans. I was due to meet several guests and a few listeners, but my trip was actually cut short to three days instead of seven due to the travel ban, which also stopped my trip to Krakow in Poland. So here in the UK, businesses are closing, schools are closing, and it seems inevitable that we're heading into full lockdown, much the same as our friends are currently enduring in Italy. But Now, more than ever, I feel it's so important that we come together as a global community and get through this. So what I'm trying to say is the show must go on, my friends. And if you do find yourself feeling lonely and just want to hear a friendly voice, feel free to hit me up. I'm here for each and every one of you. But today, we've got Ritis Loris on the podcast. He's the co-founder and CEO of a company called Omnisend, which is a marketing company automation platform. And here's a successful entrepreneur who has spent over 10 years building and bootstrapping startups and getting involved in the e-commerce world. And he also discovered e-commerce marketers have a very particular need pertaining to automation. And he has been on a mission to use Omnisend to empower small and medium-sized e-commerce merchants since way back in 2014 and has become a top-rated app in the Shopify app store and has been listed in the G2 selection of top 50 products for marketers in 2019 and the top 100 software companies in the EMEA. But enough from me rambling on. <laughs> Let me beam your ears all the way to Lithuania so we can get him on the podcast right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Hey, really pleasure to be here to talk to you. Yeah, I'm Rita Flores, uh, co-founder and CEO of Omnisend. Omnisend is a marketing automation tool built for all online stores and all e-commerce businesses. So we basically help... Uh, e-commerce businesses to retain their customers and to communicate with their existing customers uh, via email, SMS text messages, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, uh, web push notifications, and who knows what channels will be here in the future. Fantastic. And I'm talking to you here in the UK, which is very close to being completely locked down at the moment. I'm curious, you're talking to me in Lithuania. What's the situation there at the moment? Yeah, it's it's really global. Uh, just before the recording, uh, we shared that both of us just returned uh, from the US a few days before uh, shutdown of, of borders. So yeah, so in Lithuania, it's pretty 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 the same as everywhere in the world. So it's a complete lockdown. All the bars, all the stores are closed, except the grocery stores and pharmacies. Uh, yeah, so everybody stays basically in house at home and. Uh, uh, and it's uncertainty. A lot of uncertainty has, I believe, as globally. Uh, the, the the cases of like infected people are pretty. The number is pretty low, uh, so we're happy about that. No deaths re- registered yet. So, uh, 
quite, I mean, quite, quite calm of people just doing their job. I'm, I'm very happy that we are in digital business already. No need to, you know, uh, to go from brick and mortar to, to, to online business. So. Yeah, I was going to say that because that's one of the biggest challenges at the moment because I think there's so many businesses that, yes, they've always had re- the option to remote work, but they've never actually uh, encouraged it on this scale that we have at the moment. So as a digital business, is it business as usual for you guys? Um, not like 100%. We have yeah. uh, we already had some some remote colleagues, so uh, there were like processes in place how how to how to handle remote work. It's I would say it's more like habitual thing. As those people who used to come to the office and they had like the desk, they had the chair, the, the, the monitors, etc. So they have to set up it at home, and you don't like. Uh, you don't necessarily have those uh, conditions to properly set up the working uh, space. And uh, especially when like those who have kids, the schools are closed, kindergartens are closed. So kids are mingling around you or making some noise. So it might be a bit uh, dif- difficult to focus. So I would say technically uh, in our case, so Omnis and this organization was ready for that, but like uh, person on a personal level, on an emotional level, uh, there, still, there still are some challenges for some of the folks. And what's happening at the moment really just highlight how quickly the world can move. And uh, something that one of the reasons I invited you on today was to talk about how the marketing strategy must be personalised and relevant for businesses now. And it also almost seems that email marketing alone is just not sufficient anymore. But can you expand on that and the kind of changes that are happening in the business landscape? Yeah, it's a very good question. And yeah, so email marketing uh, just a short disclaimer, I would say. So uh, we we are working with e-commerce businesses. Omnisend is a product for e-commerce businesses. So basically, when you talk about about marketers, I have in mind like e-commerce, those who do sell something online. Although nowadays, like uh, I would say, a lot of businesses, even though like really traditional ones, they are becoming digital and they are becoming at least partial. Uh, like online businesses, you know, have in mind lawyers. It's very, very, very uh, old school, uh, how do you say, profession and, and people serve usually in, 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 the, in that old school way. Uh, but but yeah, on the other hand, you can, you can purchase templates of various contracts online and where it becomes a really transaction and e-commerce at some extent. Uh, yeah, so uh, email email itself, uh, traditionally and historically, for everyone who sells online, email was the most effective retention channel to communicate with your existing customer base. It still remains the most effective, but what we strongly believe and what we see from the statistics that if you augment email with other channels like uh, text messages, SMS, like uh, Facebook Messenger communication, WhatsApp communication. Uh, it really uh, helps you to increase uh, to increase sales and to like really to provide a better experience to, to your customers as you allow them to choose uh, their most preferred channel for you as a brand to communicate with, with a customer. So that's, that's kind of a fundamental belief and we, we see some statistics which really uh, uh, proves that uh, omnichannel is working better than email only. And on this Daily Tech podcast, we do cover a different topic every day and a different technology every day. So we will have some people listening that are completely outside of this industry. So for those people, and just to get everyone on the same page, can you just talk through what exactly omnichannel marketing is and ultimately why it is so effective? Yeah, so omnichannel marketing is when you, uh, on the single communication flow, you add different uh, different channels. So just basic example, someone was visiting your website and was looking at the specific product category, let's say shoes uh, or like summer flip-flops. Uh, so uh, like identifying uh, the interest, the interest and the intent of a potential customer, maybe existing customer, and and starting like campaigning, uh, campaigning to him or her uh, based based on that interest and uh, using different channels on the same campaign flow. Like initial initial thing is campaigns are automated more. The second thing you have various channels on the same. On the same flow. So just just an example. Neil was uh, was visiting the product category shoes. Uh, we identify that we send an email first if we have a consent, of course. Then we send then we send a text message if Neil has ignored our email. Maybe afterwards we send a Facebook Messenger message and uh, like 
finally we start retargeting campaign on Facebook or Google uh, display network, which is the most costly way to to reach the customer. So uh, in, in this omni-channel strategy, there are two key benefits. First one, you make it in uh, in the most cost-efficient way for you as a business. So just you may start with the channels which are relatively cheapest and then add the more and more expensive channels like very targeting on Facebook and Google ad networks is the most expensive and email relatively cheap one. Uh, so it's it's one thing. And second thing is really you uh, make your marketing uh, much more relevant for the customer and less intrusive. So instead of just, you know, start running instantly uh, five different campaigns for different channels, you just put it on a single flow and and you basically allow your customer to decide which, which channel is the most preferred. So actually you make marketing much more friendly for uh, end customer. So why should e-commerce marketers rely on omni-channel marketing? Is that something you can just talk me through quickly as well? E-commerce marketers already rely on the, on the, uh, email marketing, so it still remains very effective channel to communicate with existing customer base. Yeah, so this is very important to to emphasize this that uh, uh, like Omnisend is a tool, and then we talk. We usually talk about about uh, retention marketing, not acquisition. For acquisition like email or text messages or any other messengers is not a way to acquire customers because you have to have a consent and you have to have like opt-in, how we call it, consent, opt-in, permission to communicate. Uh, but uh, yeah, so initially you have to have a customer, then you have to ask for permission to communicate, and then you could do it and really invite your customers to, to get back to your website and to complete repeated purchases there. So that's kind of a, a first thing, uh, what is very important to understand. Yeah, and the email is the most effective. And then you add other channels on top. So we just see uh, see some, some really beautiful numbers. Let's say uh, using a single channel and using free channels. So let's say email plus text message plus, plus web push notification, uh, purchased rate from the campaign increases by almost 290% on average. So that's what we see from our for a while from our existing customers, you know. So the the and like so just some statistics from like single channel campaigns the uh, purchase rate uh, on average is like 3.2% from what you communicate to entire base and like if you use at least three channels it really grows up to almost 12%. Because that's how you that's how you find your customers in 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 the way they are they are most willing to communicate with you. So let's say if you were talking about email plus SMS only, so two two channels, those two channels combined in a single campaign. So on average, on our existing customer base, what we see that those two channels have more than almost fifty percent. Uh, uh, higher uh, probability to end up in conversion. So if like email is a single channel, it converts around 2% uh, of all the campaigns. So, uh, so, so with SMS added, it already grows up to 3%. So, you know, just adding another channel uh, really helps you to, to do better marketing and to get better results out of that. And I'm curious, what, what are the most effective channels that you find? It really, it really depends on, on the situation and the best ways really to, uh, to use uh, those channels in a smart way. So for campaigning, email uh, is still the most effective for sure, just sending well campaigns. Uh, for automations, let's say for um, just an example, post-purchase automation. So then uh, your customer buys from, from you something and you send a uh, send message, okay, we have we have dispatched, we have received your order, uh, the, the survey, how did you like the experience while well, purchasing from us, how did you like the product, etc. So SMS in, let's say, in this communication is like super effective. Uh, Facebook, let's say, or WhatsApp communication is very effective for like back to stock campaigns or, or like uh, new arrival campaigns. Then, then um, customer proactively ha- has requested for uh, for some message. Okay, I'm interested in the product, but they see that if this is out of stock, could you please let me know when it is it is back to back back to stock? So, um, so yeah, so. There's kind of no single answer, uh, but you have to be creative. And, and uh, there are a lot of use cases where you can 
play play with them and get the best results. Uh, on average, email is still the most effective. The second most effective is SMS. It's really living its renaissance nowadays. Text messages. Um, three years ago, uh, like who could who could ever think that you know this old school text message will become uh, a new a new kid on the block? You know, becoming effective again and then being used by marketers and and uh, liked by by customers as well. And of course, you are the founder and CEO of Omnisend, which I believe is a marketing automation platform. But can you expand on the exact kind of problems that you solve and what makes you stand out in this very crowded market? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Market is crowded. So a couple of things. First thing is we really specialize uh, building a product for e-commerce only. Uh, so, so this is our specialization, which really helps us to uh, to come out with a better, like pre-built default solution. So, a lot of a lot of like knowledge is already there, accumulated knowledge there, because we do it only for this specific industry vertical. It's one thing. Uh, second thing is really we are omni-channel solution. So. A lot of a lot of uh, email service providers they have added some channels like some have added SMS, some have added like web push notifications. So we have like many different channels in place, as already said, like SMS, uh, email, web push notifications, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, as well as the capability to synchronize with Facebook and Google ads. So, uh, so it's all in one place, and within Omnisend, you don't need to have an email as unique identifier. So, any of those channels is we treat it as a subscriber. So, basically, we change the understanding of what subscriber is. If we've got only the phone number of a customer A, that's perfectly fine. Maybe we can ask for email later on in in the customer's life cycle. Yeah, and the third thing is, uh, is I would say it's a lot of data. So uh, Omniscient really synchronize a lot of backend data and tracks a lot of front-end data about your customer's behavior and what really allows you to really uh, personalize communication and, uh, and, and, and make your marketing messages more relevant. So while building uh, uh, segments, proper segments, while adding some uh, products based on uh, previous customer behavior uh, or interest in general while adding some recommendation engines in, in place and then you know trying to predict what what might be uh, interesting for that specific customer so i would say those three elements are really uh, unique what Omnison has and i've got to ask I mean, what's the story behind the company what put you on this path because i suspect there must be a story there yeah sure <laughs> sure there is always a story so <laughs> So um, I used to run digital marketing agency, uh, just general one, you know, building websites, uh, Facebook apps, uh, doing marketing campaigns for our customers. And we had some customers who were uh, online stores and uh, we realized then, okay, those online stores, they have much more data comparing to other businesses about their customers. And uh, it's the first thing. And the second thing is really you can make an impact because the entire uh, customer journey is happening uh, mainly on in, in, in on, like on internet. It's it's all digital. So um, yeah, so that was kind of two, two key factors where we saw, okay, uh, we can we can really create the unique uh, unique value for for those those type of customers. And we build a product, and uh, yeah, it, it took off, and we finally ditched our uh, our digital marketing services and focusing on building product only for already uh, quite a while. And I'm curious, after ten years building and bootstrapping startups and get involved in the e-commerce world, what have been the biggest lessons that you've learned during your career, and what have been the the biggest changes that you've seen as well? Uh, so, biggest lessons uh, I would say about e-commerce industry, uh, it's not that um, you know when we start like building this product, and I thought that e-commerce is a really tech savvy industry and those are L adopters, but uh, no, except like few D 2 C brands, a lot of people who are selling online, they still the uh, they they're not. Uh, 
they are there because of the market uh, forced them to be there, not just because we love uh, everything digital in general. We know how to how to sell things, not how to you know make it digital. So it's it's kind of rather conservative industry, although from 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 like at the glance or from the distance you could think that e-commerce is something which is really really tech savvy and very technologically robust thing. I would say it's it's, it's one of the f- learnings and. Uh, about the industry, about like the business itself. Uh, so you should never stop as, you know, once once you're in digital industry and in IT industry, in tech industry, so you have to be uh, always, uh, you know, uh, innovating, innovating and innovating again. Because if you just stop because your competitors will will outperform you and you will be left behind. So that's that's absolutely very important. And uh, yeah, that's probably like key key learnings about about industry and about business. And looking to the future then, what's your focus going to be moving forward? I understand obviously it's a bit of a crazy time to ask a question like that, but what excites you about the role that emerging technologies are going to play in that immediate future? So um, what what is really exciting is like um, when we talk omni-channel, we talk omni-channel uh, uh, as a marketing uh, concept, but uh, more uh, more that like we strongly believe that like e-commerce uh, or retail will be omnichannel in the future. There will be just commerce. There will be no definition like as e-commerce or like brick and mortar. So everybody will be able to purchase whatever they want uh, in like multiple, multiple and various uh, channels like visiting br- brick and mortar showroom, uh, ordering uh, on social media, ordering on dedicated website and marketplaces on your phone and your desktop even on your watch, etc., which is getting that direction, but there is still no actual unified experience for the customer. Because usually if you visit the uh, brick and mortar store, uh, a, you cannot just you know buy the size you want if it's not in place. And in the future, I believe that uh, there will be more showrooms and fitting rooms where you will find, let's say talking about clothes, you will always find your size and the color you like, but there will be only one item of that size and that color. And you're gonna fit, if it fits you, you're just gonna order there and it will be delivered uh, to your doors the same day. Yeah, so that's that's, that's where we see the future of, of commerce and as being a facilitator of, of this commerce. So it's really kind of thrilled, thrilled. Uh, we're really thrilled to, to, to follow this, this direction and help really to, to, to market to the people, to talk to your customers, etc. So uh, that's basically the future, just you know, to reflect the needs and where, where the market goes. But we st- strongly believe that it's going to be that on the channel direction. Fantastic. And for anyone listening, I'd like to find out a little bit more information about you and what you're doing. What's the best way of uh, finding you online and also contacting your team if they have any questions? Sure. So uh, omniscient.com, uh, that's our website, and you can find the company on, on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram, and myself. Uh, yeah, and you can, you can, it's it's really, we have even a free version, so it's very easy to to try it out if you would like to get uh, to get uh, as, uh, through the product and introduce. So you can you can book a demo, and we will gladly show show you the product. And if if it can help you to uh, to 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 better communicate with your customers and to really personalize your marketing more, uh, yeah. And personal myself, so probably social media, or LinkedIn or Twitter. Those are most preferred for, for me, like LinkedIn, the most preferred. So definitely I always love connecting with people from uh, industry and, and just smart people in general. Excellent. Well, I'll add all those links to the blog post that will accompany this episode over on my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. It, like I say, it does feel an incredibly crazy time at the moment. I'm here in the UK, you're in Lithuania. We've got people listening all over the world going through the same thing. Which, I th- But I just think that conversations like this just make a... L- are just so valuable in a time of madness. So thank you so much for not cancelling and taking the time to come on here and talk with me today. I really appreciate it. So stay safe out there and thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting. Stay safe. That's probably the most important for now. 
So a big thank you to Rightis for coming on the podcast today. And although much of the world is on complete lockdown now, I love the fact that we're still all talking together and keeping our head in the game and proving that technology does work best when it brings people together, even if we are locked in our homes. And I meant what I said earlier, though. Loneliness can be a bigger killer than the virus itself. And I think now more than ever, I think we need to use technology to look out for one another. So if you have any loved ones, keep in contact via FaceTime and other video conferencing tools, share conversations and share tips as well on how we can better communicate each other during this time and ultimately keep each other smiling out there. And like I said, if you don't have anyone, please hit me up. I'll try and put a smile on your face and just give you someone to talk to or listen to. And I mean that. So. On that poignant note, stay strong, gang, and I'll be back tomorrow with another guest. So a big thank you for listening, and until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.